there's been so much, uh, you know, disruption that redefining why brands matter is absolutely critical. What their role is, you know, three quarters of brands could disappear tomorrow and nobody would care in the slightest. So I think we've all got to be a lot more ferocious in terms of defining why we matter. Hello and welcome to Fast Forward, where we're talking to some big picture thinkers about the impact of the pandemic to help our UK customers plan for the future. Today we're joined by two leaders from the world of agency. Lucy Jameson set up Uncommon Creative Studio with Nils Leonard and Natalie Graham back in 2017, and they've had a really successful few years just picking up Campaign's annual award for Creative Agency of the Year. No stranger to growth and success, we also have James Parker, who is Chief Solutions Officer at Jellyfish, who have grown significantly over the last few years to become a global network, offering clients uh, advice and support in all aspects of digital transformation. Welcome both of you. Thank you for joining us. And I'd like to start with you, Lucy, uh, in terms of the big trends that you think you have uh, benefited from as you've grown the agency over the last few years. So I think there are probably two things that we think have been pretty critical to our growth. The first is that I think we came out with a really clear point of view, a really strong point of view, that we only really wanted to build brands that people in the real world were glad existed. And I think we captured that sense that lots of brands are trying to redefine why they matter, why they matter to society. Um, And the other thing I think that's been really important for us is that we work in a slightly different way. Um, both from the fact that we do, I think, as much we do acts as rather than just ads. So that could be making a candle that smells like the things you miss uh, during the pandemic uh, to making a hairdryer of Piers Morgan's head to dramatise the hot air he produces. So it could be about the things we make. And it's also about, I think, the way we work. We have a much more fluid, flexible model Uh, which means we can kind of scale up and down and build a studio around clients' needs rather than we've got a bunch of people sitting there and we have to find stuff for them to do. Well, we'll come back to how easy or difficult that's been. But James, what's your answer to the same question? Yeah, I think it's um, certainly been in the sweet spot over the last couple of years. I think it's fair to say as we see everything changing, clients have been trying to unpick how all this digital stuff works. And I think we've been well placed to help decode decode that and the way that they work on their platforms. Um, and that's just broadly gone from anything from content creation to data and analytics, and then actually how you leverage the, the new mediums that are available to you digitally. It's been a fun, exciting time. Probably happened a lot quicker in the last 12 months than I probably expected. Um, and certainly I recognize everybody's decided that those plans that they would, they would look at in maybe two or three years time, they've accelerated to three months but um yeah we're definitely um we're definitely one of the the lucky players in the industry and we recognize that at the moment and lucy what's your take on the last 12 months been in terms of how has it affected the way the agency's been growing i mean it's a horrible thing to say but it's actually been very good for us um i think what what's happened is uh clients are looking for agencies that can really respond very fast Um, That's in our kind of DNA. We were built, you know, with speed in mind. Um, So that's one thing that's changed. For example, we literally with BrewDog, we on a Friday night, uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic, spotted a brewery in Germany who'd uh, flipped their production, recommended to James Watt that he turned their brewery to make punk hand sanitizer which he then gave away to the nhs but that all happened literally over a weekend so i think that speed um and the fact that clients were interested in us helping them figure out all kinds of different business problems not just necessarily making ads for them so i think those two things have been really important and then probably the third thing that's been really interesting for us is that um we're able to work with anyone anywhere I mean, that's always been the case, but I think suddenly clients have gone, oh, well, if I can, you know, if I can't see my agency anyway, uh, then I'm as happy to work with somebody from London or New York or Sydney or Shanghai. Um, and I can just pick the best creative talent. And that's also really good for us because we've been doing a lot more US projects than normally we would have done at this stage, I think. Yeah, and you've both got a reputation for... Um 
uh, kind of ripping up the rule book slightly in terms of the processes that uh, you're, you're using with clients. And that sounds like it's going to be something that's quite a difficult thing to do, kind of inventing things as you go. Uh, like James, is that, has that been an easy thing or, or, or does it bring difficulties? I think it depends on where you start. Um, I was thinking about the, um, the history of the industry and it's almost like a bloodline of ho- uh, racehorses. Uh, if you track back most indus- like most agencies, they come from a set way of doing something back in the 70s and you can see it it all kind of goes from that way i think our heritage actually comes from people who don't know what it's like to work in network agencies so we've been a lot more open and adaptable for different processes it's, it, it is literally thought of in that way and um and as we grew we knew that we couldn't grow in we had, we had to grow in a distributed way anyway so as we were growing in um, the u.s we were mixing talent from from Barcelona and London anyway. And I have to say, when when people decided that we, that we needed to lock down and work from home, everybody picked their laptops off, uh, went home, and there was, zero, there was zero disruption, really, apart from appreciate the stuff they, they were having to deal with in their, in their actual homes. But as far as work was continuing, they were all working in this distributed way anyway, and we just actually carried on. There was no nip, nip back to the office and download something from a server because it was just it was just natural the way we work and that we just believe that's a model that will just continue and isn't going to hold us back and accelerate us really yeah it's interesting because i think we're we of course all came out of a, a i guess traditional creative agencies and out of a bit of frustration of that but um the joy of mr sorrel meant that we had an enforced year out uh and in that year out we all went and did lots of different things nil started a coffee company I interned at Facebook. I mentored for, uh, you know, startups uh, at a at Telefonica's accelerator. Did loads of different things that I would never normally have been able to do, and um, that I think meant that we didn't create Grey Mark II or just a creative agency like we might have done otherwise. Um, and so, in many ways, I'll always be really thankful for that year out. Uh, it was it was brilliant from that sense. And I think that sort of, uh, you know, that just joy of kind of going, OK, we have no idea what this brief might lead to. We'll just deliver what we think the very best answer is, regardless of channel or any of that kind of stuff uh, is really fun. It's definitely been a while since there was um, any real disruption, uh, to use that word, in the, in the industry about the way we're thinking. And um, usually you see it in economic cycles where something happens um, and quite proud of the industry doing it again um gives you a bit of faith in the creative thinkers that there are out there and it's I, i'm all for it the more the better the thinking the better really yeah well let's talk about that a bit more so you said you mentioned the last while being really riding on a wave of digital uh, adoption digital transformation all clients kind of focusing on that uh, if that's what the last 10 years has been about, what do you think the next 10 years are going to be about? And what are you? What are your kind of hopes for your role in that? Should we start with you, Lucy? I think uh, this is a, just a really fascinating time to be, you know, in the industry, because I kind of feel like we've come out of that wave of the pandemic, hopefully. And I think there are going to be a couple of really big trends. The first of which I think is sustainability um, now. Look, we saw after the last uh, financial crisis, sort of interest and concerns about the environment plummeted, actually, and then picked back up again. But this time round, we haven't seen any change in people's level of concern about the environment. So I think one of the big questions uh, every client's going to have to answer is what impact are you having on the planet? Um, So I think that's going to be a big old shift there. And then I increasingly think that there's a a sort of another sense, which is, you know, what's your role within people? Uh, So you've either got to do something for the planet or for people. So what is your kind of purpose? And I think there's been so much, uh, you know, disruption that redefining why brands matter is absolutely critical. What their role is, you know, three quarters of brands could disappear tomorrow and nobody would care in the slightest. So I think we've all got to be a lot more ferocious in terms of defining why we matter and then actually what we're going to do to make our businesses more sustainable. James, what's your view on the next 10 years? 
Well, we focused on in the last five years, this hope of digital meant really um, efficiencies in the supply chain for buying media. And um, it's not lost on me that majority of the a marketer's budget is spent on media. So there's been a, a lot of focus of that. And I think most of the efficiencies have been had out of that now. There's not that much more to sweat, sweat out of it. Um, but in doing that, it gives um, everybody uh, more mediums to play with. And I think that actually, if we do a better job of explaining all the different mediums, it gives um, Lucy and her team a bit more freedom to to do things that have more impact than the traditional economics um, of the way media was done in the past. Um, And with all those things, um, to Lucy's point about sustainability, um, I'm quite excited about um, the rebirth of true marketeers, those that really understand the marketing fundamentals and realise that there's more to... Uh, you've got more levers to play and pull rather than just communications. The the data that gets created allows you to f- focus on those fundamentals, and I think that is that will really make a difference. It might be a bit tricky for for a lot of people who maybe have been in the industry for a period of time where they haven't had to worry about the fundamentals because they've been kind of focusing on the other things. Um, but it should give everybody a more room to to have more flair, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing what what gets born out of that. And coming out of the other side of the pandemic and looking at what your agencies are going to look like, and in particular the people, the people that you hire and how they're working, what do you think is going to be different there? Oh, so we've agonised a lot about this um, this year because we've got quite a few people who've obviously joined. We've been growing, um, you know, this last year. We've got quite a lot of people who we've never met. Um, And I was having a chat with uh, one of our you know, producers. And of course, she stood up and I'd forgotten that she was nine months pregnant and about to have a baby. And it's extraordinary, that kind of thing that you miss on, you know, remote working and Zoom and all the rest of it. So I think there are two big things that trying to find ways for the serendipity. Um, So I suspect we will have some, you know, in out flexible working, but encouraging people to meet some of the time. Uh, It's how you bring talent on particularly new talent to the industry. Um, That's harder, I think, at the moment. But for us, the real upside is that, you know, we've always had a a model of being global from day one. And we work with um, brilliant, talented strategists and other people all around the world who can give us local insight and input into a brand or a problem from day one. And that ability to be able to go, I've got a really exciting brief, who in the world do I really want to work on this? That's just fantastic. And I think a year and a half ago, two years ago, when we were setting up, we were doing that, but clients were a bit more resistant to it and sort of worried more about not having boots on the ground. Now I think everyone goes, yeah, okay, that's absolutely fine. So that's really exciting, the ability just to work with the very best talent. What about you, James? Is it a similar picture or different? So I can see some some elements of playing playing that out like we have like at the moment i've got three people one in tokyo one in barcelona and one in baltimore they're all working on the same project and they're loving the ability to collaborate and work work around the time zones i recognize that some some brands might might worry about who's actually doing that work it sounds like it's um offshoring but it, it isn't really um what, I'm, what i am conscious of actually is that i remind myself of why i wanted to work in the industry as a 22 year old uh, the desperate need to get into Soho, be there, um, and do all do all the things that that came with the job. It was like it's a it's a lifestyle as well as as well as a career, and um, we're we're thinking very hard about actually, to me at my life stage, it might be it might be really good to have a bit more flexibility in in the way I work. But for them, there's something about working agency, and it we we want to desperately try and get the culture right and in an environment that works and that's the key thing so we're going to be working hard to make sure that it's it's attractive for everybody certainly it gives more flexibility with everybody both for employers and employees on how how they how they think and their perceptions of work Um, but we definitely want to make it attractive so that you can get those moments of the right balance of uh, moments of serendipity if you like within there because um, that's to to Lucy's point the industry is meant to be fun um, and we want to make sure that we don't lose that by going the other way as a knee-jerk reaction. So it's not easy. We'll find it somehow. And in that way, you've got 
you've got an ability to maintain a, a culture that's that's important to the brand. So what have you learned from the last year that you are keen to take forward post pandemic? Lucy, let's start with you. So one of the think the few brilliant things that came out of the pandemic was just a willingness to try anything and everything. And I think because, uh, you know, agencies and clients felt very much like they were in it together, there was no them in us, because speed was a real challenge. Um, everyone, and I think clients felt liberated that they didn't have to go through 10 layers of approvals, that they could just go off and make something happen because people were going to appreciate it. And I think that sense of bravery and that sense that what's the worst that can happen if we're trying to do something good, let's get it out there and see how it goes. And speed is more important than right. That was really exciting and really liberating. And I'd love to see, you know, that really continuing well beyond the pandemic. I don't know if it will, but that would absolutely be one of the biggest upsides for me. I look back and say, if if people did have spare time, what, what did they do with it? And um, where's the opportunity? And um, I recognise that we need to look after the industry of all those people that are coming into it and training them and educating them and the and spending more time with them to to help them in their in their career. They might think in two year bursts but really it's an industry that hopefully you'd be in it more than 15 20 years and through that period you've got to train um and i think that there's a there's a way forward now of everybody learning um as an industry we kind of do it naturally anyway but it's more than just learning on your job it's um taking courses read i know reading books but reading books and learning from from the history of marketing because nothing's really changed. The mediums have changed and maybe consumer behavior has changed, but the fundamentals haven't. Um, and I think I think we'd, we'll look after the industry and make sure everybody can, can be better and enjoy their job. Briefly, what's one piece of advice you would give to all marketing clients thinking about their plans for the next 12 months? So I think if it's one thing, it's um, revisit the fundamentals of marketing that you haven't focused on for a while um, there's actually quite a lot of creative thinking that can go into those levers that you might not have been focusing on um, and the output if you think to yourself why would I do that it's just that you've got loads more data now around to make smart decisions and they're the things that are actually going to make a difference for your brand for me it would be make sure you go after real fame I think we saw over the pandemic lots of people doing the same kind of boring ads. We're here for you, you know, all the rest of it. We saw those kind of compilations where everybody came back with the same thing. Um, so just try and really think ahead where people are going to be feeling and then remember everybody else is going to be doing that. How are you going to do it differently? Um, that would be my biggest bit of advice, I think. Be famous, be different. Thank you so much. We're going to have to leave it there. It's been fantastic talking with both of you and hearing your perspectives and your optimism about the future. So thank you. Now, we have got some great speakers lined up over the coming weeks and months. So if you'd like to hear more, subscribe on our YouTube channel or on Twitter or on LinkedIn. Follow Think with Google UK. Thanks very much. Bye.